Well, let's delve a little bit more into insurance. The two types of insurance they're going to focus on are life insurance and annuities. Those are the ones that are most related to investment management, advising our clients, but they're going to introduce, you know, what are the role of other types of insurance products. One of the things you should be thinking about is earnings risk. Human capital, if you lose the ability to work, you're not going to be able to earn that human capital you might have been depending on. Well, you can think about disability insurance. Disability insurance would pay you a portion of what you had been earning if you were unable to work. Now, this is not tied to death. That's a life insurance product. This is you're still alive, but for some, there's been an accident or something prevents you physically or mentally from being able to do the job you, you had, the disability insurance would begin to pay you. That's something people should think about early in their career. If that loss of income would be very severe and detrimental, maybe they need disability insurance. Uh, we also have premature death risk. This is where the human capital ceases due to death. Not because you're not able to work, but alive, you're actually no longer alive. That's the role of life insurance. You pay a premium to the company. In the event of death, a face value amount is paid to the beneficiaries. So this would ensure against premature death the cessation of human capital from those sources. The funds would be there to provide for the survivors. It would replace money that would have been earned if the individual had lived. Now that's kind of important because that defines the financial basis for determining whether you need life insurance and how much. The role of life insurance is not a lottery ticket. It's not, oh, let's buy it and hope we die so the the beneficiaries get money. That's not the way we want to look at it. We want to analyze, is there human capital? Would the individual have been able to earn and save and build financial capital to meet certain obligations? And if they were to die prematurely, would any of those needs continue? Under those conditions, then there's a reason to want own life insurance to replace that lost amount. So we don't want to just buy life insurance for no good reason. There's a basis for determining whether it's needed and how much is needed. In a sense, the opposite of life insurance and premature death is longevity risk. Would you potentially outlive your assets? Well, then we would need to project lifestyle, lifespan. We'd need to project the rate of return on the assets, project the need, project the inflation, any other items that are affecting what's going to cover things. And then if there's a risk we could outlive, we could consider the purchase of an annuity and specifically what's called a lifetime annuity. That as long as the insured is, or the annuitant is alive, the annuity will continue to pay. And in many ways, that's like a pension. You get the money as long as you're alive. In fact, a good way to think of an annuity is you're purchasing a pension because you don't have one given to your buyer employer or it's not adequate. So you buy, go buy an annuity to create a lifetime income. This is the introduction. We're going to come back and look at life insurance and annuities in a lot more detail, but this is just set, setting the general purpose and role of different types of insurance products. We've already brought up, what if you own a home? What if you own cars or other things that are very valuable? There could be accidents where they're destroyed. They could be stolen. That's property insurance. It would pay you off if that asset suddenly ceases to exist. There can also be situations, maybe somebody's going to sue you someday and say, you caused me damage. We're suing you. What would put you at risk of being sued? You have money. If you have net wealth, somebody else can try to take it away from you. They could go into court, argue you've done something improper, and that you they should be able to take your wealth, take your assets. Well, there's insurance for that. It's called liability insurance. The insurance company would pay if claims were made and you were found guilty. You could consider buying liability insurance. Wealthy people probably need liability insurance to protect their wealth. Different types of things to be aware of. 
Now, this is an important slide. Should I just go buy insurance? No, you have to pay for it. I want to introduce an idea. I'm going to use the dollar sign as if you're a U.S. investor. You're paying premiums to an insurance company. The insurance company is going to invest that money, hopefully earn a rate of return, build up assets, and if there is a claim, then they will make a payout. So, is this a way to build wealth? Not really. We're going to be studying insurance companies and managing the portfolio, and we're going to find they're heavily regulated, they are invested very conservatively, the rate of return the insurance company will earn on those premiums is not terribly high. So they're not going to be creating immense amounts of wealth. They also have expenses they're going to have to cover, and then it's that money they've collected and what they earn on it that funds the distribution. They're not just giving away money. If there's a claim, they're a sense giving you back your own money. But you're insuring against risk. A lot of people buy insurance. Some of them file claims. All of the money that's been collected is available to fund the claim. So what you're really doing is insuring against risk. In aggregate, if we look at all of the money being paid into the insurance company on a present value basis versus all of the payouts, we're not creating any wealth for the insured individuals. We're probably re reducing their wealth. They could probably individually invest and get a better rate of return than they are in aggregate off the insurance. But all of these people are going to pay. Maybe one of them is going to have a claim. It could be catastrophic for the individual that needs the claim if they didn't have the insurance. It's a sharing of risk. Insurance is best thought of as not an investment, but a risk sharing. That's a much more appropriate way, which implies you don't want to buy insurance for everything. It's not a way to build wealth. Where you have situations that would be catastrophic, you really couldn't survive them if bad luck, you're the one that's hit by the, by the event, that's where you should consider buying insurance, but not for every possible risk, only for those that you can't afford to take the risk yourself. That's an important consideration.